I'm afraid I will be a, a bit disappointing because it's not much better in, a, in biology and life sciences than it is in, a, in physics. So very briefly, I, I'm a biologist. And uh, I, I guess all the, 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 the scientists here working in life sciences know uh, the European Molecular Biology Organization, the, the EMBO organization, so I'm a member of EMBO. But uh, this is not what is important. I'm also an, a member of Academia Net, and I'm almost sure that almost nobody in the audience knows what is this uh, academy. And this academy, in fact, is a database of profiles. It's a European database of profiles of leading women scientists from all disciplines. And I'm sure you never heard about it. And I should confess that before being elected to this, uh, nominated to this academia, I didn't know it before. And thanks to uh, the EMBO chair, Maya Leptin, so a woman, uh, who really tries to propose to this academia all the uh, EMBO members. So why is it important, this academia? Because it's a database, so it means that it's very useful for all the stakeholders, for all the meeting of the organizer, for uh, to, to have the, the panel committee and everything, you have a database. And I should confess, and, and, uh, and you agree, Claudine, that there is very few French women in this database, whatever the discipline is. So it means that our institutions, because you have to be nominated and proposed by the institution, so it means that the French, French institution, including this one here, never propose women in this database. So that was uh, the first point I wanted to uh, mention. How does it work? Okay, so I will again repeat what my colleague said before. So this is a number, the number in, uh, in France. This is uh, the, 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 the statistic from the ministry and also from the CNRS. So it's very obvious that if you looked at the proportion of women uh, in the uh, scientific careers, uh, you have uh, about 60% of technician. But as soon as you're looking at the uh, grade A scientist, so a research director, then we are... 30%, something like that. And the changes are so slow over time that it's almost uh, non-detectable. So there is really no um, improvement. Uh, also in the uh, decision-making position, it's even worse. So we are in blue. Uh, so this is the percentage in terms of uh, the chair of university or the president of organisms such as uh, the CNRS, and again, it's uh, almost neglectable. And it does not improve, I should, I have the feeling that it's uh, even worse uh, over the past years. Uh, so clearly there is, uh, both in India and in France, there is major uh, career obstacles for women in science. But what I would like to uh, describe you now is that uh, these uh, obstacles are not only in terms of career, but it does not only concern position, but it also concerns the grants and obtaining grants for uh, women, because, and particularly for the young women, because if you want to continue uh, in science, and if you want to progress, you need grants. Uh, so I, I will present you the numbers from the ESC, because the ESC is doing a very nice gender analysis all over the uh, discipline. Um, and basically, uh, in green, you have the male. In yellow, you have the woman. So on the top panel, it's a grade A position. In the, in the bottom panel, it's a grade B position, so assistant professor in all the European countries or associated countries. And of course, you see what uh, we all know. There is much less female in science, and particularly in the grade A position. And uh, now if you look at the curve, the curve corresponds to uh, uh, the, the, the woman, the percentage of women who apply to the ERC grant, so the senior gr grants here, and here it's uh, the, the junior grant or the, um, the consolidated grant. And again, you can see that 
even in this yellow population, there is less female uh, who apply to the ESC. So, of course, we have to encourage uh, women to apply to, uh, to this kind of grant, not only ESC, but uh, particularly to this one. So, so far, nothing is really new. We all know that. What is really a problem is the next one. When they compare the percentage of applicants and the percentage of grantees. So here on the top, it's on all the fields, junior, uh, sorry, it's, um, it's on all the programs, so junior consolidated and, and, uh, and uh, senior grants in life sciences, physics and engineering, and humanities. And you can see that here in life sciences, there is already a major problem, whereas in physics and humanities, you can have a look on the starting consolidated or advanced grant. Basically, there is no gender bias uh, during the selection. In life sciences, it's just a nightmare. Here for the junior, there is 36% of female within the applicant. And then there is only 26% of female in the grandest. So, and this is for the junior. So this is more than discouraging. It means that if a woman starts very enthusiastic, I mean, all the scientists were all enthusiastic, particularly when we were young, you applied and you say that, and you say, no way, I can change. So I think there, there is something to do which is very simple, which is not a quota, because everybody say, oh, we don't want quota and so on. But we could at least push to try to keep a grantee applicant gender ratio constant. Particularly in ESC, because for those of you who don't know, uh, the, the, the way the grants are distributed over the discipline is really depending on the applicants. If there, if there is more applicants in humanities, there is more grants in humanities. So I think we should push, and friends should push, to have the same for women. If there is more women applying, then there is more women granted. So then there is no quota, and it could be incitative for women to apply a bit more to this, uh, to this kind of grants. So I'll let you with this suggestion. 